Hi guys. Okay, that's enough. Come on. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so today we're going to be uh, reviewing Mission Impossible Fallout. And welcome to Geek by Heart. This is Jay. And I am Lainey. And we are here as usual, as geeks, and uh, we're here to cover Mission Impossible Fauna mm -hmm. by Tom Cruise. Yes. And Bing Rames. Yes. And Simon Pegg. Mm -hmm. and Rebecca, Rebecca Ferguson, yeah. Sean Harris, yeah. Henry Cavall, yeah. Superman. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Yeah. No, I meant, we see I meant why. to give no, my cape no, too. No, we see why the beard is so essential in, in, in this. It was worth it. It was yeah. worth it. It was absolutely it worth was it. It was definitely worth it. No, as usual, the Mission Impossible franchise, this one is done by uh, Christopher McQuarrie. Yes. Okay, Ripley, writer Mission and Impossible. Yeah, writer and director. Yeah, exactly. Um it was kind of like a direct sequel mm. from the last one. Mm -hmm. Um it kind of felt like it was the first time in the franchise when that happened. Yeah. Alright, so they definitely took the storyline from Rogue Nation into Fallout. Um, especially with the same villain and new villain, newcomer Henry Cavell. All mm. right, again, if you didn't get it, spoiler alert. Okay, uh, we um, always do. We always, always do spoilers. spoilers. Yeah. All right, so um, I hope I, you should have said that before. Hope you guys watch it. <laughs> yes. So yeah. So let's talk about it. Yeah, let's talk about All it. All right, let's go. Of course, the movie, the synopsis of the movie was basically um, the whole whole idea of the syndicate. Mm -hmm. The syndicate they stole this this nuclear bomb. And, um, uh, like the three uh, nuclear uh, balls to make yeah, nuclear bombs, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now um, Tom Cruise and his peeps were They're trying uh, to get it back. Trying to get it back. Yeah. And um, you know, there's a lot of twists and turns in it in terms of getting it. But mm -hmm. trust me, it is. It was worth it. Awesome. It was worth it. Awesome. It. Ah, uh, I can't wait to talk about it. All right, so I gotta combine several of them because there's so many things to talk about, or there's so many things to praise about this movie. So, like, first off, the skydiving scene was awesome. Oh, I, I felt that. Tom Cruise is getting his money, and he's earning his money, okay? That goes into the fight scenes. Yo, the fight scenes were crazy. Okay, mm -hmm. and they felt realistic, That's they so felt right. brutal, and so I loved every minute of it. That's and so as you know, Tom Cruise mostly always does his own stunts. Mm -hmm. So like that's what I'm saying, he's getting his money and he's earning his money. Okay, so another good thing about it was that the movie was really tense. And I felt it because I felt like this was one of the more realistic Mission Impossibles. Like even the stunts and even the things that were happening, they weren't so, so, so grandiose and so, so, so over the top. So I was really, really invested like in the first one. Other than obviously the train scene and again in this one, other than the helicopter scene. But like I said, it was it was so intense because I was so invested because it was so realistic. I felt like it actually could happen. It wasn't so over, 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 over. All right, my last one, because um, like I said, I could say a lot, but I'm just like cherry picking a couple yeah, things. Yeah. I These felt, are your bad geeks, right? No, this is my good geek. Good my la this is my last good yeah. geek. They did a lot of nods to previous movies. So first off, they had Max's daughter, which that's going to be a little bit my bad geek too, but they had Max's daughter that was in there. They had his wife that was in the third, um, the third movie, that was prominent in the third movie, and then did guest spots in the fourth one. Exactly. They did the rock climb, they did like a rock climbing scene that was like an ode to the second one, but that was the only good thing about the second one, because that was trash. Um, you know what I'm saying? So like, there was a lot of little nitpicky things that were like, oh, that was in the other one, that was in the other one, that I liked. Like the last scene, I actually thought it was a a, a nod to Temple of Doom. Hmm. Like if you were one, the the one that were, were, were they were on the the cliff or yes. Oh, okay. when okay. when okay. when Indiana and um and and the guy are fighting and yeah and they were on the cliff. And yes, I, I I it was reminiscent of that to me. All right, so my bad geek. Um, first of all, the fight scene in the bathroom. Yeah. Ethan's face was spotless coming out of it. 
I thought he was a little bit molest. I was like, oh, that was that was weird. Because if you've seen it, it's freaking intense. And he just looked absolutely normal. I did not like the fact that you knew that the wife was gonna be in some kind of peril of danger. Julie was gonna be in some kind of peril of danger. I would have wished that they would have kept the dream sequences out, they would have kept all the other stuff out because then it just would have been a really cool reveal at the end that Julia was there. I already knew that, but I wasn't surprised by it. And that's because they kept throwing her in your face. And I'm just like, nah, I could have took that out. It would have made it such much more of an intense situation for me. Max was, Max's daughter was underdeveloped. Max's daughter? Yeah. For, for her to be Max's daughter, I felt like the way they treated her, was it was a throwaway line. They shouldn't have even said that was Max's daughter. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's how underdeveloped she was. Because I was expecting that she was going to mean more, being that she was Max's daughter. Mm -hmm. You'd be like, all right, she about to she about to get it in. Nah. She was basically about two or three scenes long. And they were throwaway scenes. And I was like, you really... You needed her to put the plot together, but you didn't need her at all, though. All right, and the last one, again, nitpicky again. So Tom Cruise, he's getting, he's getting old. He's Don't get me wrong, time, so. he is making his money and he's doing a great job. Mm -hmm. But like, especially when you look at the fight scenes, mm -hmm. you look at how Henry Cavill was was fighting. You look at how the person that they, they thought John Locke was Locke Lark was mm -hmm. until that wasn't or whatever. Yeah. That was amazing and it was so intense. And then you had Tom Cruise doing uh, uh, blah blah uh, 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 uh. okay. Get, 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 get. Blah, blah. I was just like, it, it, it didn't, it, it, it felt very, very unbalanced. Tom Cruise been in the game for a while. Now his running, he did a lot of sprint work, and I was like, yo, his cardio was off the chain. Okay, but like, I'm like, okay. I, I'm hoping that if this was their swan song, they went out with a bank. But if it wasn't with their swan song, then hopefully they're gonna give the reins to another set of spies. Okay, that sounds good. And those were my bank. Yes. So basically, my good geek, we have, uh, first of all, I gotta tell you that this Mission Impossible is the best out of all of them for me. Mm -hmm. I think it was the best spot on. It was crazy. It was, oh my God, it was adrenaline. <laughs> He's adrenaline. So One of my first good geek about this movie was the parachute scene. The parachute scene, as you said. The side of his scene. Yeah, scene was yeah. Crazy. Mm -hmm. And then they had the bathroom fight scene. Yeah. Oh my god. It was, it was brutal. Oh my god. The bathroom fight scene. It was scene brutal. Was, yeah. That was brutal. well, well, well choreographed. Yes. You know, you didn't have the cameraman with them fighting as well. You, you know, everything was like, like right on balance. Yeah, that's you a saw, good point. Yeah. That's you a good saw, point. It was... You saw the good fighting, the good mm -hmm. hand to hand combat type of thing. Mm -hmm. and, and I love that. Another one was the bike scene, the bike chase scene was a really good one as well. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, I'm not sure if you've ever watched The Matrix. I think it was uh, the second Matrix where the girl, where the chick was like, Riding through the the the, the, um, the car traffic. Company. Yeah, that I remember. It kind of give me um, a, a remnants of that. You know, I, I, the whole bike going through the traffic type of thing. It seemed like you don't really remember, but <laughs> whatever. I, man. I know he's exactly. um, The entire movie in itself was really intense. I did say that before, and I'm gonna say it again. It was really intense. Mm -hmm. Were the one like me, you know, watching the movie and you were like grabbing to your seat and you had yeah, to sweat. I did too. Like, you know, you and we didn't see it together exactly either. What I'm so uh, exactly, the fact that you were doing the same thing yeah. I was doing, like yeah, 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 it yeah. was good, and, and that's what I love about Mission Impossible. My bad geek, ah, man, it wasn't much, but uh, the first one I can tell you off the bat, I don't understand why they actually brought over remnants of, of Rogue One, of Rogue, of Mission Impossible Rogue, Rogue Nation, Rogue Nation, into this one. I think. Each sequel should have its own mission, and for each mission, it's more difficult than the last movie. And I think why they should do it that way is because it will bring more intensity within the movie and more challenges within the movie. Ah, uh, the last one was a uh, stunt, a lot of stunt, a lot of stunt, a lot of stunt. Mm -hmm. This one, this, uh, the one where he crashed his bike and he fell over the car and whatever, whatever. That was, dude was just, that's dude crazy. just got up and just 
Oh, facts. He really did. He was like, I'm okay, let's go, let's go. I was like, hey, you, know, you are right about that. Yeah, come on. You man. are right come about on. that. Come on now. Now, wait, now, he did get hurt on one of his sons, though. Like yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he did. He like hurt. in real life, like it wasn't like just for the character. Like yeah. in real life, he actually got hurt. Either he broke his ankle or his yeah, leg. I think when he was jumping over. Yes, the one yeah. Of the so yeah, yeah. Father yeah. Tom's catching up with him. So I that's, agree with that's, that that's my last. Mm -hmm. That's my last um, bad game. So let's start. What is your qualms and what I said about my good game, bad game? And let's talk about it. So first off, I think that um, we knew that Henry Cavill was going to be. The evil man like personally um if you look at the trails it looks like he's even fighting tom cruise in the bathroom mm. so i wasn't surprised by that i didn't think it was a twist i did agree with you when he was saying that um kind of he's gonna say something else but when they had sean harris in um the underground prison i guess you can say mm -hmm. and then he then henry henry cavill was talking to him and then it wasn't sean harris that was a twist mm -hmm. i definitely was like oh shoot like that that shit was kind of cute mm -hmm. but other than that another thing i, I was waiting for it i was like <coughs> another I thing that um i didn't like which i was mentioning in my bad week is the fact that um uh, i don't like the fact that they bring over they have um they bring over whatever issues from Rogue Nation into why? You know what? Because I, I I believe that the movie in itself should have been a whole different a whole different set of characters. You know that face off with the team. What I believe they should have done is make each Mission Impossible movie more difficult, more harder for for them to 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 pursue whatever mission they're going to accomplish and the team gets much more rougher until eventually they start bringing in like new characters that will probably maybe phase out um, Tom Cruise and that. To me, I think that uh, Mission Impossible is not going to, it's, it's going to be a long set of movies. And, Something and like James Bond. No problem. And see, here's where, <coughs> here's where introducing the apostles and the syndicate makes it happen. Mm. Because when you have the syndicate in the in the fifth one, that seemed like a standalone, and it could have been a standalone. Mm. But they did well to say, okay, in the sixth one, um, Sean Harris, you know, he he got he got. Um, at the end of the fifth one, he was done. Mm -hmm. And then the sixth one, the people that followed him started to do their own Rogue Nation. Mm -hmm. Okay, to me, I thought that that was actually, it could have been like Rogue Nation too because they started to have their own rogueness about them or whatever. Yeah. Just setting up the syndicate can have them do many movies with those central people. And being that there's a lot of them, because it made it seem as if it was a lot of apostles, they could have each apostle doing something different and that could be its own self-sustaining movie. I, I, like, I, I think I just, it's I, a I, great I, idea. I, I just, a, a TV series. I, I, which it could, me, which it could. I, I, I agree really with that. I think that would be more of a TV series. But I think it could be but a movie series. The, on, the, on the first, on the first end, I think that Mission Impossible movies should have been an uh, uh, individual set of movies with, well, with has been. Like, something like James Bond. But it has been. <laughs> if, if you think about it, even though there have been, maybe there have been some recurring characters and some not. Obviously, Van Reyes has been a recurring character throughout the whole series, even though there was a couple that he only was there for like a second. Mm -hmm. But most likely, pretty much the whole series. Mm -hmm. Now, based on what you're saying, this is only the first time they've actually kind of extended something. Like, this was a true sequel to MI5. Yeah. Everything else, MI1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, were standalone. You know what I'm saying? The only thing that was recurring was possibly the characters, but other than that, no. And I feel like I said, it, it, it makes it set up for a really big plot, okay, that can go for several movies mm -hmm. as the central bad guys, okay. even though the central bad guy can be the apostle, I mean the apostles, but the central bad guys are so many because there are so many, which leads me into something else. I I I think that Julia's gonna die. Mm -hmm. If they if they bring up another one, I do not think <laughs> Wesley Bentley, who was cast as her husband, was like that's a you you would probably do a no name for that. Wesley Bentley, Wesley Bentley is not a no name. The fact they casted him and he already looks creepy to begin with, I think he's definitely a positive. What I'm thinking is that, in my sense, mm -hmm. I believe that each Mission Impossible movie. You know, should have a different background, a different set of characters, 
a different purpose. Mm. You know, instead of taking from one movie and taking put bring it into another movie. Oh. And then take that one movie and then bring it into another feature. Well hell, if that be the case, just, you can have a different IMF team for each movie then. Yeah, no. It's, I, I don't I don't You can't have both ways. No, I don't believe that because it's called Cause because then it's James Bond all over again. No, because no, but that's the thing. You're thinking of of, of a continuation saga of something that is that is probably irrelevant mm -hmm. you know what I mean because basically what is the whole purpose of the apostles to be the puppet keep the to be the puppet keepers of the world basically the puppet keepers of the world mm -hmm. okay so what why why this one group have to be filled in for for temp for Listen, so many it doesn't have movies. to it doesn't have to i'm just saying that it was a good look for them to do it i was okay mm -hmm. with this being a direct sequel pretty much mm -hmm to MI5, mm -hmm. okay? I was also okay with if it, it could be its own self-sustaining su trilogy. Like if they have an MI7, you know, there's no mention of it, mm -hmm. but I think they also probably will happen if this does well. Mm -hmm. If this does well, it's gonna happen in some way, shape, or form. And they might do it in a way that like, okay, Tom Cruise is maybe a supporting character, yeah. and then they usher in a new IMF team or a new IMF team leader, True. okay? And I personally like if they actually went in that direction, and then they had different altogether IMF teams, because to me, it is starting to feel James Bondish, mm -hmm. and I'm like, I need it to be its own entity. Okay, well, guys, you tell us what you think. Um, what's your score and everything? We didn't even say our score. <clears throat> no, no, no. I'm talking about what they think. Okay, got what, it. What you guys think about what we're saying about mm -hmm. the whole mm -hmm. Mission Impossible, you know, jump mumble jumble. Blah, 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 blah. So you know how it is. And um, you know, I give this movie a five out of five. Um, okay. Why is because. It, Cinematography was good. Oh, it was awesome. And the scripting was good. The fight choreography was good. The, um, the, the the music was good. It was. <clears throat> yeah, it was really intense. And of course, there's a lot of action. This is literally fighting neck to neck with Infinity War for the summer movie. To me, for what, this is what I think. I'm trying. I I want to give it a five out of five. Okay. What you but Four, four seventy-five. Four seventy-five. Yeah, it's not. It's not. Okay. It's I not mean, absolutely it's perfect. I think it's a great movie. You will want to see it again. Mm -hmm. Um, you will see want to. See oh, IMAX. at. See the IMAX. That's a fact. Yeah, do not IMAX. see it in regular standard. It does not give you the depth that nah, you need. You, you do justice. need to see an IMAX. See IMAX. Absolutely. Yeah. And if you want to spring for IMAX 3D, not bad choice either. But definitely mm. IMAX. But yeah, I, I want to give it 4.75. I think it was a great movie. I think it was the, just the predictability made it not a five to me. Mm. Yeah. So of course, you know, they're gonna be having a, um, a new Dragon Ball, movie, a Dragon Ball Z movie uh, that's coming out in January next year for some reason. Um, it's gonna be cartoon, of course. It's not gonna be live. Oh. Like, you know, oh. Okay. But it's all good, you know. Because live action that would that suck. I, I, as a as lot if they of, didn't see that coming a before. Of, a lot of. You know what? I'm gonna. I'm gonna have you watch um, an Asian movie. You know? I'm gonna have you sit down and watch an Asian movie. Dude, there's no movie that you can have me watch that's gonna make me think they can do Dragon Ball Z good. Uh, okay. As a live action. Okay. Fine. <laughs> I'm not talking about that. Saying I'm gonna let you sit and watch an Asian movie and see how it's done. End of quote. Okay, no, 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 no. I end of quote. Okay, is the Asian movie done in realism or like done? Yeah, done in realism. What you mean? Like, is it? Does it feel? Is it? Is it done in realism? Okay, listen. I'm just gonna let you sit and watch an Asian movie. And what am I supposed to be getting out of this? That, say, that Dragon Ball Z can be done no, no, no. in a listen, realistic listen, way. I'm not gonna say anything. I'm just gonna let you sit. Or live watch. action, I should say. I'm just gonna let you sit and watch an Asian movie so you can see what I'm talking I, about. Anyway, guys, I hope 
you do not get fooled. You definitely subscribe to us as usual. Please this do, but Jay. do not get fooled. This is Jay. I'm Laney. He's and not we'll gonna have me next thinking time that Dragon Ball Z on could be live action. Geek by heart. Heart. Okay, and I heart Peace. that I don't like. <laughs>